Hello everybody, uh, you are welcome to clip 4 of part 5 uh, modern um, modulation techniques in wireless communication In clip 3 we uh, went through the OFDM uh, communication system and OFDM uh, how to uh, like the structure of the uh, transmitter and the receiver uh, also, we discussed uh, some of the benefits of using uh, of DM. Uh, today, we uh, or in this clip, we talk about space time frequency coding, which uh, will give uh, like large and high uh, like flexibility in allocating our radio resources. So uh, it gives us full. Um, a range of diversity as we uh, mentioned before that uh, we have time diversity frequency diversity and space diversity uh, all of them actually they can be um, like um, uh, or, or, or we have the full flexibility to change or to allocate over all these spaces in the space time frequency coding so the idea is simply based on that when we have the symbols here then we can control uh, for example the uh, the coding and interleaving as well so this will provide some kind of time time uh, like uh, uh, diversity and also we can uh, allocate the output of this space of, of this encoder space time frequency encoder output over one of the uh, antenna outputs so here we assume that we have n antennas in the transmitter so we have uh, first antennas up to n antennas and uh, uh, over each antenna we can implement our of the m transmitter so we have of the m transmitter one up to of the m transmitter n and you can see here that we have the serial to parallel and also uh, we have the IFFT as we describe it in uh, in of the M part and we have cyclic prefix here and then we have the parallel to serial and then we have the transmission over each of these branches so we have here the multiple antennas and also we can uh, like uh, um, control uh, or, or have the beam forming over each of these antennas so the, uh, we assumed here that we have face or we have like a space uh, encoding inside this block inside this this block okay and as I said that we have uh, we can also uh, control where to distribute those uh, uh, serial off bits after after encoding them and interleaving them over one of these outputs so we have here the channel, the fading channel in the receiver uh, uh, side. We have the serial to parallel. After that, we have the uh, cyclic prefix removal, and then we have the uh, the the, um, uh, the inverse of the I fifty, so which, which will be the F fifty, and then uh, we have the outputs as parallel, and then inside here we have the space time frequency decoder and then we will have our symbols outputs so this actually will provide us for like full freedom or, th or three degrees of freedom of a space time and frequency however it should be mentioned here that uh, the optimum allocation of uh, the in, in time and in frequency and in uh, a space as well as uh, the, for example the power uh, the optimum power allocated for each branch for example what is the power here p1 and p2 and up to bn and also the uh, uh, the ratio that uh, uh, i mean the modulation level uh, used in each in each sub band actually uh, when we formulate this uh, problem as a mathematical in mathematical form and we try to find uh, the optimum allocation uh, this problem is known as nb non polynomial problem which means that because we have discrete here it is commentarial problem which means that uh, the optimum solution it can be like uh, the size or, or the computational power required to find the optimum solution it will increase 
in in non polynomial time with the size of the problem when the problem is a small size it can be solved but when the size like duplicated or triple or something like that we might need very very like long time in order to find the optimum solution uh, if the size of the problem is large so the optimum solution or the optimum allocation for all these resources it might takes well, it might take like <laughs> maybe hundreds of thousands of years over your laptop. So, uh, however, of course, uh, there are many suboptimal solutions which can we, where we can find the solution very fast and or still they, they, are, uh, they give satisfied uh, solutions. So it, it, this kind of problems is called uh, NP problem, non-polynomial problem, like, like knapsack problem. And uh, uh, in general, it is like uh, integer uh, programming and uh, combinatorial problem. They, they, they have many different kinds of such, uh, of such problems in optimization, of course. So this is the, the space-time frequency coding concept. So this is the time that, that we have time. We have selecting the time, the coding, uh, the uh, interleaver um, in space, and also in frequency based on the allocation of those subbands. Orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. So in the frequency division uh, division uh, multiple axis, it means that uh, how can we uh, allocate uh, subbands for users for different users? So uh, for example, uh, uh, in this uh, time, so this is the time and the frequency subcarriers, and for example, in in the first time slot, so we allocated this uh, subcarrier for user three, and we allocated these two subcarriers for user one, and we allocate this subcarrier for user two, and so on. Okay, and 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 this is that of course, m m like in in LTE advanced, we have more than two thousand subcarriers that we can allocate for users. Uh, but this is just for description or for, for uh, just to describe how, how this of DMA can be done. And uh, in, in second time slot, you can see that we allocate here two subcarriers for, for user three, but here one subcarrier for user one and so on. So it, this actually gives us high uh, flexibility in allocating the subcarriers uh, based on the requirements of users. So for, for example, one user wants very high data rate, then we can allocate higher number of subcarriers for that user than the other. So this is this gives us full like flexibility uh, uh, in allocating the, the subcarriers among users. So this is called of DMA, so orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. Okay. And uh, uh, now we are just talking about one one uh, like uh, uh, over one antenna for example and actually we can also do that for multiple antennas um, with beamforming or with MIMO as well as we mentioned that it will be like frequency space uh, uh, coding in that case okay uh, this this will be in the in the down link uh, actually there's one problem that I didn't mention before in the of DM in general uh, it is called um, uh, peak to average power ratio peak to average uh, uh, power ratio this peak to average power ratio um, is related to uh, the signal in time when you have such signal in time for example the, the, the allocated signal okay so uh, uh, sorry so when you have such kind of uh, of signal, it means that it has peaks in the uh, uh, in the time domain. When there is peaks in the time domain, then uh, and also this some small. So uh, if you compare the peak power required and you divide it on the average power, the, the the difference is very high. When the difference is high, what it means? It means that you you will need to use uh, uh, linear power amplifier when you want to transmit this signal you will need to use linear power amplifier because the operating point for the uh, amplifier should be in the middle in order to cover all the the, the uh, signal range okay uh, if you uh, uh, use non-linear power amplifier then uh, this signal might be clipped 
some somehow and the clipping of this signal it will cause like problems because in that case we will have intracarrier interference and we may lose the orthogonality principle in of dm okay um why we need to clip, uh, use nonlinear power amplifier and what is the problem with linear power amplifier linear power amplifiers usually it is uh, uh, it has a very low efficiency so the efficiency if you have like uh, um, uh, like uh, capacitance load or 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 it is it is between 25 percent up to 50 percent so when it is 25 percent it means that if you want to transmit one power one watt of power then there will be four watts like dissipated as heat inside the, the power amplifier only 25 percent of efficiency this by some modifications of linear amplifiers we might reach to maximum of 50 percent so if in order to send like a, a, a half watt of power you will dissipate half watt of power inside the amplifier uh, this might not be a problem in the base station base station we have like big uh, like we have usually uh, all the base stations connected to the utility power and also it has big uh, 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 battery in case that uh, the utility power uh, for example disconnected for some reason so, but for in the mobile phone it is a big problem uh, remember that most of the power the uh, cons uh, uh, consumed in, in our mobile phone is used for the power amplifier of uh, the signal of the radio signal uh, um, uh, or at least considerable uh, uh, like percentage of the used power is used for the transmission of the radio signal in your mobile phone so using um, high efficient uh, power amplifier is uh, very very important in in the devices like in mobile phone or in IOT application in in small devices which is operated by small batteries uh, whatever was a battery but usually we need to keep the energy so this this is one actually of the biggest problems in of DM when when we want to implement them in the mobile phones for the uplink or in the small devices because of that, uh, uh, we uh, in, in the uplink, they use different kind of uh, modulation. It is very similar to this of DM, but they use like some linear encoding inside to, 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 to remove uh, this or to handle or to like uh, uh, mitigate this peak to average power ratio. And it is called like single carrier frequency division multiple axis. So this is what is uh, what you what it is used in, for example, in 4G in LTE advanced for the devices in order to reduce the problem of the peak to average power ratio. So uh, this keep uh, this is good to keep uh, in mind. Okay. So this is for for multiple antennas and special processing. So we can have like multiple like uh, this is in uh, as you as we know this is in in uh, time and this can be in frequency or the reverse of course. And then we have them over each of those antennas. Inside of course we will have this some some like special processing. Well, special processing means that we have faces here. So if we have face array antenna. For uh, at each at each antenna we have some complex uh, like uh, weight here, which means that we change the face the, the the face of the signal transmitted over each antenna in order to at, uh, uh, to uh, like implement or to achieve certain uh, pattern uh, uh, radiation pattern. For example, you can you if you want to send some data to to certain terminal and the other data to other terminal for example so you can control this virtual pattern radiation pattern by using the uh, proper uh, antenna weights they should be complex weights of course yes actually uh, we mentioned about this uh, high peak uh, to average power ratio as one of the disadvantages of, of dm uh, and this is the single carrier FDMA is used in the uplink uh, for the devices which are battery operated. Uh, of course, we have also the problem of uh, intercarrier interference. Uh, 
uh, when we use higher efficient power amplifier higher efficient power amplifier means that we we put the operating point down so that the dc current inside the amplifier to be as small as possible but this will make a clipping or or, or uh, like uh, cutting in the signal which might cause this uh, ICI, uh, ICI problem um, uh, there's one other problem for off DM that they should be accurate timing to receive the orthogonality. So when we send like multiple subcarriers, so we should have them like according with some timing in order to preserve the orthogonality and uh, uh, like uh, uh, get the full benefits that that those uh, subbands are completely dis uh, like like uh, separated. Okay. However, uh, those actually disadvantages of off DM makes them not th that efficient to be used in 5G. Why? Uh, in, in, in 5G, um, uh, like uh, few of the requirements, extra requirements, not only the data rate, or we, it is not a matter of uh, increasing the uh, user uh, like uh, big data rate. This could be done also with the conventional hour, hour of DM by uh, allocating more bandwidth by using some like uh, called like uh, uh, band aggregation, so we can have more bands and aggregate them together to in, in order to increase the data rate using, for example, millimeter waves. We have other techniques in order to increase the big data rate of user. But uh, the, 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 uh, the challenge here for the 5G is not only increasing the big data rate, but how to uh, increase the number of uh, served devices in order to support this IoT, the Internet of Things. So in, in, in 5G, uh, we are looking to support, let's say, uh, thousands of devices within uh, one cell. So maybe in one kilometer square, you want to support like thousands of devices in the same time. So this, this uh, massive number of devices uh, uh, was a problem to be achieved in, in of DM. Uh, 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 because whatever that the subcarriers that you have, they are finite. So you have finite number of subcarriers, and once you you, you you distribute them over, if you have like beside normal users, normal mobile users, you have thousands of other like devices connected to your internet, and you want to achieve uh, reasonable uh, quality of service for all these thousands of devices with different quality of service requirement, then you might not have enough number of, of orthogonal subcarriers to support all of them. Even even with using like time frequency space encoding, which gives you a lot of flexibility, but still you will have like shortage in the subbands. This is one problem. There is another problem actually. Not only this one, that uh, uh, the second requirement of five G that we want the devices to have very small latency which means that uh, the device sh should be able to send or deliver it is message within like few milliseconds actually according to the uh, the, the, the objective or, or, or uh, the, that we want to achieve is one millisecond however that I of course I don't know if uh, how much they uh, in the practice it will be possible to achieve one millisecond but still this is one of the requirements so we need to, the, that the device to be able to transmit it is message within like few milliseconds. Okay, but the device when they want, according to the off DM, the device should be should be first ask the 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 base station that they want to have like some packet to be delivered, and actually this signaling information that I that hey I want to send something so that the the base station will allocate some resources for that device in order to send actually this process itself uh, it, it can take up to 10 or even more milliseconds so this before before establishing the connection it might take even more maybe 20 milliseconds in order to achieve this this requirement it depends on how busy the base station is so uh, and if you have like thousands 
of uh, devices and all of them they want every time to uh, to to request some some uh, uh, some uh, radio resources uh, like some subbands in order to submit their their information this will increase the the, the signaling uh, over the the network the 5g network and this will also reduce the time uh, so increase the the uh, uh, the time and you can see that uh, uh, this will be a big problem because if you want to deliver your message within one millisecond or two millisecond or even ten millisecond, it is a problem for establishing this. Okay, what if you if the device once it has some information, just take them and submit to the submit them uh, 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 like according to Aloha channel, just submit them to the to the base station. Okay, now there is no synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver. What will happen? Uh, it will be non-orthogonal anymore. So, in 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 case that we 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 want to support very large number of devices per per cell, and in order to minimize the, the the latency, so we need to relax the condition of orthogonality. So this is the reason actually that we want to go to non-orthogonal multiple access. Is non-orthogonal multiple access new? No. Uh, as we seen, uh, uh, or we, as we saw in the CDMA part, actually we mentioned that the the multiple access of the CDMA is not orthogonal anymore. Because even if you if they are orthogonal at the transmitter, you cannot guarantee that they will be orthogonal at the receiver because of the different delays due to the multipaths. Okay, so the, so the uh, uh, the non-orthogonality uh, concept we know it before, and we know also how to how to handle it. So this is the main concept of the uh, non-orthogonal multiple axis and the idea in 5G they use this non-orthogonal multiple axis but in the same time they um, they use some techniques to to handle them because when you have non-orthogonal you might get like very high interference and the communication link might fail so how can we achieve uh, the successful communication so uh, for example one method is by allocating the proper power for each terminal and after that we use the successive like noise uh, interference cancellation algorithm uh, i just give you a fast example here so if uh, uh, for example for user 2 is fa quite far away which means that it has the worst channel uh, uh, losses so the losses here is very high so we allocate the highest power for, for user 2 and then we allocate the smallest power for user 1 in the downlink okay so now what will happen at, at user 1 the power of user 2 will be very high compared with the, the received power of user 1 okay so what will happen for user 1 user 1 will try to like to, to uh, decode for the symbol of user 2 because it has the highest power so once it is decoded the, for user 2, then it is removed from the received signal here. So we reduce the interference by one symbol of user 2. Then we come to the next strongest power for user 4. This is the next strongest power. Then we also, uh, at, uh, at terminal 1, decode the symbol of, of user 4 and then remove it from the signal. And for user 3 and remove it from the signal, finally it will decode it is on signal. So this is why it is called interference cancellation or successive interference cancellation. Okay, there is another way that we can submit over like the same subband, the different signals, but we use like uh, CDMA, similar to CDMA modulation. So th this will reduce the orthogonality between between uh, 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 the same sub subband. So even at user one, if they use uh, over the same subband from, uh, uh, for, for example, for user 4 and user 1, then we can use CDMA. So it will be like like, like hybrid system, CDMA with this with this of DM, uh, build subbands in order to reduce the orthogonality and decode the, the signal. What will be the cost of using CDMA over, uh, over of DM? As we know that, uh, for example, in LTE, Every subband is uh, is about fifteen kilohertz the bandwidth. So, uh, uh, which means that um, uh, the the uh, the symbol 
uh, time is about 66.7 uh, microsecond. It, it, it is used. So now uh, the, the, uh, we don't send just the information, but we send the coded information. And with using coding information, it might, especially if we increase the processing gain, then we will lose what? We will lose the throughput. So the, the the bit error the bit error the, the bit rate sorry will be reduced after that. But if we look to the application of IoT, in many such applications we don't need high data rate, but we need more reliable communication. We don't we, we are not looking for the high data rate. For example, since of that sensing about the temperature, so uh, uh, the rate of changes of temperature usually is not high, or maybe sensors measuring the the, the pressure or the, uh, the or wind. So uh, wind, of course, they have the highest, uh, the high data rate required compared with temperature, but it depends on. So based on the sensors, that sometimes we don't need very high uh, data rate, but we need reliable communication. So in that case, we can we can integrate the transmitted uh, b b bit uh, uh, data bits with with CDMA, and and also we increase some processing gain. So we use some processing gain in order to improve the quality of the received signal and guarantee that it is it is received it will be received successfully. Okay. Now we come to the uh, uh, radio receivers. This is the last part of this uh, uh, part five. So in the radio receivers, actually, this is the basis, the, the, the simplest form of the radio receiver, where you have here the selection, where you select the, 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 the carrier that you want uh, to receive the signal around. So this is called the uh, tuner. And then we have RF amplifier. Usually the RF amplifier should be low noise amplifier. And then we have the demodulation process where we remove the carrier and we take the information, then low bus filter, for example. This is for simple, it is called direct receiver, sometimes direct receiver. And this is, for example, for simple radio. Usually for the, um, like, children or, or, or that students in, in um, in the primary school, sometimes they implement such kind of of, of basic receivers at uh, in the in the in lab to sh to see that it is funny because it it, it might be like just a few component to be connected together and then they can listen to some AM radio or FM radio. Uh, it is called direct receiver. Of course, it, the performance is not good, uh, and those especially the selectivity is not is not good in such kind of receivers. Then we have the most like famous uh, receivers. It's called super heterodyne receiver. In the super heterodyne receiver, actually, the 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 RF signal which will be converted to intermediate frequency. It is called IF frequency. So before the demodulation, we remove the signal from it is RF to IF. The reason for, for doing that that uh, you can actually optimize your circuit when uh, you use uh, like. Um, uh, uh, IF modulation when you use single uh, frequency that you can use uh, it, it, it it can be optimized in that case so because assume that you you, you use a receiver for a new HF where you should receive signals from 600 megahertz for example to 800 megahertz so you can see here the difference is 200 megahertz it is not uh, easy uh, to uh, design circuits which work over all these frequency band. However, when we make the, uh, it is called uh, frequency down converter to IF, for example, the IF, it can be, let's say, 450 mega, and then all this circuit will work only on this 450 mega. So it depends on the, the frequency here. Whatever was the frequency, it will be down, down, uh, uh, converted only always to 400 for 450 mega for example this is called intermediate frequency and within this intermediate frequency you can design your filters you can design your uh, even if if the signal is digital so you have digital demodulator for example or you might have just normal analog demodulator it depends on your receiver uh, if it is analog or digital this works for digital system as well as for analog systems so this is the most famous kind of uh, receivers at least in all times but nowadays we have another kind 
is called soft defi software defined radio. The idea of software defined radio that we convert in RF stage, we convert the signal to digital bef before the demodulation. So you can see that this is the analog. So we have some bandpass filter. Of course, uh, if you are working, let's say, uh, in UHF, then uh, it is good to have bandpass for the, the UHF. If you are working, for example, from 2 to 3 gigahertz, it is better to have that. Of course, if you can have very, very fast analog converter and you direct, directly connect it to the antenna and then you have the control, of course, after amplifier, you have the control to which band you will take. It will be even more powerful. But in reality, in the practice, it is better to have it in this forum. So uh, we uh, decide in which band that we are working, for example, from 2 to 3 gigahertz or from 1 even to 5 gigahertz. And then we have uh, the uh, frequency down converter to within certain range of all, all this band. And then we have ADC and electrical converter after that we have digital signal so with this with this digital signal it depends on your software so you have this b so if you want to decode the signal as uh, uh, for example of the m you can do that if you want to deal with it as cdma you can do that uh, whatever you want to do to do with this signal, it is just processing, it is, it is just an algorithm. So it is like in MATLAB, for example, you read a signal. So, and I told you that this signal is FM, frequency modulated, and you want to decode it. So simply you come to the MATLAB and you write the decoder of, or, or you call a function to decode frequency modulation. I told you now I use, let's say 64 quant. Simply, you call the function that decode 64 quant. So whatever you want to do, you can do directly as, as it is a digital signal. Okay. So uh, sometimes, as I said, in, in, in more advanced techniques, even they don't have this frequency down converter, and then they can connect directly the analog converter to the low noise amplifier in this, in, in, in this stage. The concept of the software defined radio is, is it, it was there since very long time ago, maybe since 60s or 70s, but it was not possible to be implemented because at that time the analog digital converter was not possible to be like uh, realized in 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 the frequency range of several gigahertz. It was possible, but it was very very expensive and it it needs a like huge uh, computation power and it was mainly in laboratories and in, in some very special devices. Devices. But um, uh, after 2000, 2010, uh, things uh, the prices uh, uh, becomes uh, go going down, especially with the with the fast implementation of the VLSI, uh, with the new like fabrication of the electronics over the integrated circuits. So uh, with higher uh, like uh, uh, clocking frequency, it was possible to have this one giga hertz ADC. 5 gigahertz uh, ADC with reasonable price and then it is actually expected maybe uh, we, we then, uh, dec uh, within a decade or, or sometimes even less that uh, all um, receivers will be based on some kind of soft or software defined radio. It gives you a lot of a flexibility. It gives you the flexibility to change from, from, from technique to technique, from modulation to modulation, or from uh, technology to technology, actually. So it, 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 now you don't have to change the electronic circuit. You, what, you, what we need to do just to update or upgrade the software. So, or, or firmware of that receiver in order to deal with the new technology. So this gives a lot of flexibility in, in radio receivers. Yeah. So you can find more about this software defined radio in the slides. Yeah, now we have uh, finished this part five. We talked about uh, some like uh, advanced modulation techniques like CDMA and also we mentioned about time hopping CDMA or direct sequence CDMA, time hopping, frequency hopping CDMA. And then we uh, discussed or review uh, the main concepts of OFDM and why OFDM is uh, uh, implemented in most of the new um, technologies. And then OFDMA uh, 
and then we talked also about space time frequency coding and uh, non orthogonal multiple access as uh, like advanced multiple access techniques implemented in the uh, 5G and networks and in the new radio. Uh, also, uh, we just review some basic concepts of receivers, starting from direct receiver to super heterodyne receiver and software defined radio. So that's all about BAT5, and then we will start talking about some technologies in BAT6. So see you there, and thank you very much.